Aloha YouTube and welcome to another Tink Tech Hawaii afternoon over here on a Friday. And I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Micah Motas. I am the co-host, official co-host now on Where the Drone Leads on Tink Tech Hawaii. I also have our travel team, Ted Walston. Ted Walston, you got me? I'm here, bro. Where you stay? Micah, we're doing good today and we are going to talk more about exciting things that we can uh, introduce about drones. And starting off, Ted, how's the weather out there in uh, Tucson? Well, I'm in Tucson, as you know, uh, Michael, we were at the conference in uh, Santa Fe on drones and on the way home, stopping in Tucson to see the granddaughters. But, uh, you know, just so the folks in, uh, in Hawaii understand, when you're in the mainland in wintertime, even inside the house, you gotta wear a jacket because <laughs> cold, that's why. Anyway, we're here in Tucson, uh, seeing the family, heading home uh, on uh, Tuesday. Yeah, I noticed, uh, Temperature here was about 66 degrees, and even for operations, we had uh, a few operations out in the school, and even them, they noticed that the wind was kind of uh, taking effect on some of the drones today. Uh, we'd like to take it to you. Um, Ted, I know you found a, a video that you'd like to share with our audience. Tell me, tell me more about that. You bet. Uh, yeah, this conference in, in um, New Mexico is one of the four significant conferences in the country regarding drones. It was the university or the uh, New Mexico State University, and uh, the top of the FAA is there, the top of the industry, and this was a and top of academia. It's a very good, solid uh, conference without a lot of commercial stuff. It's all basically information and information development, policy, and doctrine. One gentleman showed up from Rwanda of all places. Oh, Actually, wow. he's a Silicon Valley guy, but he's got an operation in Rwanda, and I think we have a video. It will uh, really uh, give you a, a, a real clear and serious view of where drones can go right now. Uh, what, what he has done is developed a medicine and blood supply delivery system, uh, two central locations in Rwanda, and they can cover the entire country of Rwanda, which is about 50% larger than Connecticut for a reference. And uh, take care of getting blood and medicines to people who are otherwise not accessible because of the road conditions and the lack of roads and uh, various uh, 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 environmental issues that show up and generate floods or landslides and blocking what roads there are. So, so just to be clear, Ted, that you, you're saying that this drone can literally drop off blood supply in Moranda, right? You bet, it can, it can oh. make Awesome. On a 65 kilometer uh, round trip with 150 kilometers straight line, uh, leaves the central location with uh, perishable supplies in it, including you know a quart of blood uh, for transfusion. Drops it off on a precision drop at some some uh, medical site in the forward area, and then returns back to the place it launched from and lands all by itself. Isn't that, that just fascinating? I mean that. That alone, I mean, drones is just so exciting that like, you can do something fascinating like that. Uh, right now, we'd like to show you that video for our audience. Um, we can go ahead and have the studio start that video for us, huh? Rwanda is known as the land of a thousand hills. It is a very difficult country in terms of topography, and many areas are hard to reach. Traversing that terrain to get to a rural village can take hours, even though it's a very short distance. Today, if a mother is giving birth and suffers from postpartum hemorrhaging, her life is dependent on getting a blood transfusion. There are many different types of blood types. They have a limited shelf life. And the challenge is when you need blood, you need it immediately. But it is uh, unpredictable which geography that will occur in. Hospitals that are in more remote areas, can have a very hard time getting enough reliably supplied blood. The time to order and uh, get the supplies by truck is just too, too late. There's no way that we can overcome the time that it takes to get anywhere during the rainy season. And people would say, okay, during the rainy season, we're just not going to make it. The best case scenario it would take at least four hours. But with Zipline, we are looking at cutting that four hours to something like 15 minutes. It is a team of Rwandese who came together with Zipline to groom the project and to make it happen in Rwanda. Their ultimate vision is to put each and every one of those 11 million citizens within a 15 to 35 minute delivery of any essential medical product that they could need. And that's a revolutionary idea for any country in the world. 
the use of drones to deliver life-saving medical products can overcome the lack of road infrastructure. We need to let our imagination soar. When you have a commodity, rare end supply, that might be an unusual blood type or something like a rabies vaccine, and you need it immediately, the idea that we could use a drone to be able to deliver this to the country is absolutely brilliant. There's nothing else that could do that in that way. It is like we no longer go around the hills, but we fly over the hills. We've pulled together a team from places like Boeing, SpaceX, Google, Lockheed Martin. And it's an honor for Zipline to partner with the government of Rwanda. We place a hub next to an existing medical warehouse, and it instantly enables that warehouse to make hundreds of deliveries per day to any location within range. The doctor sends us their order by text, by phone call, whatever's convenient. Somebody identifies the need and then prepares the package, puts it on the drone. Then we take that vehicle and we put it through pre-flight tests. It's launched, it flies automatically out to the clinic. The path has been already calculated, it's in the computer. And then they'll receive a text message saying, Zip is two minutes away, please walk outside. It drops the packet, somebody goes and collects it. It turns around, it flies home, and then we get it ready for the next delivery. Our service not only makes it possible, but also affordable for countries to deliver reliable access to essential medicines for all of their citizens. What we are looking forward to see here is saving lives. This isn't a small step forward. This is a transformational change to how we provide medical care to people across the world. Okay, YouTube, I uh, hope you were fascinated and, and inspired by this one particular video. Ted, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And really, uh, I like to expand this to, especially here in Hawaii, you know, for our, our, our followers and our, our, our community, our, our neighbors. Can you just imagine what you can do with this technology? I mean, with this drone, think about it. You can, we deal with so many incidents here in Hawaii or, I mean, most recently we had a, a hiker, unfortunately, and, you know, our love goes out to the family and friends out in the community, and you just never know what will happen, and that's why we care about life. And when you use technology for similar situations where you can deliver maybe blood supplies, medical supplies, I mean, our imagination, you know, it, it all comes down to our imagination. Right, Ted? You bet. And uh, what, what these, uh, this group, which is out of Silicon Valley, has done is uh, work with a country that welcomes them, which is Rwanda, as the, as the situation of remote populations with remote uh, medical facilities and very difficult transportation. So the best way to get there is by air. But it's very expensive if you go by traditional manned air. So for small supplies, where they can be carried in the two-pound category, a, a, a drone system is perfect. This group did not, however, go out and do the usual thing of buy something in the store. They started looking at the problem from a systems perspective, just like Dr. Ken Kaneshiro is up in Manoa, understood the problem, understood the restrictions and the barriers, the performance required, the reliability required, and the issues of certification that were required within that country, and put together what they call a vertically integrated team in Silicon Valley so they didn't have to depend on outside suppliers for an autopilot or for systems. They were able to do it all in-house. No frills, uh, no wasting time. Just get the job done and get the medicine and the blood delivered. And that's uh, what they... Ted, I, I'm glad that you mentioned about Dr. Ken Kenishara out in UH. Uh, Kainoa and I, we were able to go out to UH and, and meet Dr. Ken Kenishara and also um, General Dara Wong and... Um, exactly what you're talking about is what we're striving for here in Hawaii and kind of put that, you know, put that imagination into all the schools, all, th all the people involved, all the drone community, right? You're taking something that you're, you're not just going to take pictures anymore. You're going to do something to save lives, to eradicate mosquitoes, to solve issues here in the Alawai or in our community, in our Aupua'a. It's very important to see that 
we're bridging our culture, uh, technology, and science, and you're, you're bridging it all into one to prove that this particular place, our home, Hawaii, is very unique. And I'm pretty sure you're out there in, in Tucson, and that's what you're sharing to the world, how significant Hawaii is for drones. You bet. Uh, in fact, that's, that brings up a really good point, uh, Mike. Uh, Hawaii is part of the Pan-Pacific Unmanned Air Systems Test Range Complex, which is uh, four states. Alaska heads it, has a contract with the FAA with all the protocols and procedures. Oregon, Hawaii, and Mississippi now are part of that four-state hui. And the task we've got is to take problems that that are defined in our local area that can be solved by the technology of drones and develop partnerships with companies and agencies and such to go explore how drones would actually do that work, in particular beyond the limits of the regulations that we all enjoy today under 107 or under the 333. What does it take to operate at night? What does it take to operate well beyond line of sight? What does it take to operate with a cluster of drones doing the same job, where one's in command and the others are subordinate to it, for example. Uh, in the case of this drone for Rwanda, what if we had to have two operated by the same operator, just to, for economy of, of, uh, of scale? So these are the kind of things we've got to write down and take on as challenges that can be tested here in Hawaii. Absolutely. And I, yep. I, I have to agree with you as far as, you know, having the community, having our YouTubers, our, our followers, you know, really want to take this time to thank you folks for following us on Think Tech Hawaii and following us Fridays in the afternoon. You know, we like to share you, we have the whole week to work on projects, figure out what we're going to do with drones, what are we going to do with the community, and we're really taking on this, you know, step by step, taking on this journey, and we got to really thank you folks for joining us you know, from all over the state. No, it's all over the world, right? Right, Ted? You bet. Yes. In fact, let's do this, Michael. Let's invite anybody out there who would like to come on the show or wants to bring an opinion or result or even, even better yet, state a problem. Come on and show us what the problems are you'd like drones to take on. And we'd like to stand that up and, and make that something that our state test function can get its arms around because only the community knows the problems better than anybody else. Right. We, in the development side, only know what we know. We don't have that knowledge of the broader community. And to the point you made a minute ago, getting total community awareness, involved yes. participation, and having the community help us identify the barriers and the issues that we're all gonna face, the sooner we can start that process in a whole of community approach, the better off will be and the easier it will be to take advantage of this technology, similar to the example we just saw in Rwanda. The whole country is behind that, and that's why it worked. Absolutely, and, and I believe, you know, it, it's going to start from, it's going to start small and then work its way out. And the best thing about it is that we're starting here from a studio. You know, we have a travel team. Ted, you're out in Tucson. You, you can believe that we <laughs> We're making a movement here. We're, we're in motion and we're heading out to the community. You know, I, in fact, I was approached by a father, you know, uh, and I, I can pretty sure any father out there in Hawaii can relate as far as sports or when it comes to their child in athletics. And do you want to critique your kid? And one thing was interesting, I was approached because I do drone work, because we do drone work here and he was asking, well, what if we record my daughter um, with her particular swing to critique and to get her better at, um, you know, figuring out how to perfect her swing? And that kind of, that's the best part about drones, right? Is because it gets you to think outside the box. You have particular situations where you're figuring out how to handle the mosquito pandemic, how to figure out how to videotape a makahiki or how to, uh, I know Iolani High School, Dr. Ken um, was speaking about how, uh, how important it was to build a drone and use it to solve problems of figuring out the, the water 
out in the Alawai and running tests for scientists. I mean, it, it's just all outside the box. And we, we would love to have anyone out there, um, especially here in Hawaii, who would be interested in sharing their knowledge or sharing their opinion about what you can use a drone for. Uh, we invite anybody out in the public and uh, Ted and I would be more than happy to even go out to you. We have a travel team, correct, Ted? You, part of us is in Tucson right now on travel, right? Okay, right now we're going to go ahead and take a quick break and we go talk more about what we can do with the community and um, really sharing our appreciation and uh, showing where the drone leads with all this excitement. <laughs> Aloha. My name is Carl Campagna. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I hope you join us as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii over the coming weeks and the alternative fuel supply chains necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. We are going to invite in and we will have significant interviews with various stakeholders, including our producers, which are our farmers and our scientists, our conversion technologies, including Terviva, who we'll see in two weeks, as well as our consumers. Uh, in, within there, we're also going to have the investor groups necessary to make sure that this uh, can advance. So I do hope you join us as we explore our deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii. And uh, the people need to Aloha, start everyone, and welcome back. It's uh, Think Tech Hawaii, and it's a Friday afternoon. Mahalo for tuning in. And we have myself, uh, Michael Motas, co-host of Where the Drone Leads, and we have our, our original host, Ted Walston, out in Tucson. How you doing, Ted? Pretty good, Michael. And you? I'm doing, I'm doing really good. <laughs> I'm doing great, in fact. I uh, wanted to talk more about what we've been doing here in our show and what we've been reaching out to the community and how exactly are we going to reach out to the community and how long are we staying here? You know, uh, we're staying here forever. We're here to stay. That's right. We are. Yeah. <laughs> what you do is always make sure it's not an assertion, but as an invitation. Yes. Rather than asserting ourselves on the community, we've got to have the community invite us, and I refer to the collective us in this domain. It's going to be, that is absolutely essential. What I sensed on this particular conference in, in, uh, in Santa Fe, uh, at uh, uh, Mexico, uh, New Mexico State University uh, was how rapid the technology is emerging and how rapid, even though it seems slow, how rapidly the FAA is moving forward in, in permissive regulations. And I will say that whereas everybody used to beat up on the FAA, the favorite whipping boy for not making any, any progress, they have made incredible progress and it continues to accelerate. So two things are going to happen. The technology and the capability is expanding very fast faster than the users, such as you and I, such as our communities, such as our schools, such as our local infrastructure and companies, faster than they can sit down and write requirements. So we're going to have this conflict between the manufacturers who want to go make things, but what they make may not fit what the users actually want. So that's one thing that we're going to see here. A second thing I think, Mike, and this is really important to both you and I, I know, is the definite and absolute need for a trained workforce it's a critical thinking workforce yes we're absolutely at, and i think i my hats off to you for the work you've done up on a nui nui and you're going to do it uh in the at wahone charter school or uh, the haiku uh, uh the hockey pool learning center uh, with that gang out there and, and other yes, schools absolutely in fact, bringing all the schools on Oahu together into a common understanding of the rules, regulations, and what they can do. You know, we've taken that obligation on. Every time we come together on Friday, Mike, we take on more and more obligations. We need to uh, duplicate ourselves and have enough workforce to go do this. But we're short a critical workforce. We truly are. And, and we'll need that uh, going forward here. But I can't say it enough how important it is for the community to be part of this. The community is the workforce. The community is also where the work will be done and where the benefits will will ensure and 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 ensue and so uh collectively and we have to get we have to start generating community events like you're doing up on a new Nui, you're going to do in on traffic yes and work with ken Kanashiro and do the mosquitoes uh and things like that so 
a, a structured approach next year, maybe 2017, Micah, is the year of the community in drones. How would that be? Yeah, absolutely. I, I have to agree with you, Ted, because, you know, it, it's going to take a lot of action and a massive amount of action. And, you know, like you and I, that's what we're doing. You know, you're out in Tucson. We're, we're out here in the studio. All of this, little things that we're doing, getting involved with the community, getting involved with Anunue schools, uh, OIA schools or public schools, rather than, you know, getting involved with UH, it, it's, a, it's, it's that kind of action, that little motion, just enough to persevere from having the results that we're looking for. And really, the community is something that's going to benefit. And all of us in a whole can benefit from using this type of technology. And of course, making sure that we have it in the right hands and having it with the right people. It's very important that we search for the right people. You know, we, we announced here on the show that we've done everything we could. We followed with the FAA, created that relationship of talking with them, understanding the rules and regulations, obtaining the certificates, obtaining the exemptions. I mean, there's a group of people, there's a solid group of people out here in Hawaii that's really pushing for safe, you know, uh, eliminating that risk and liability. And that's what we're all about. That's what we're pushing for. And that's, that's what we're bringing to the table to the community. And, you know, we humbly ask all of you to please join us and share some mana'o or some thoughts of what we can do to solve problems that uh, everybody can persevere from, that can benefit from. And uh, like we said, we're, we're not only here in the studio or here in Hawaii, we're traveling around the world. And we're more than happy to take people from Hawaii and showing that this is possible. One step at a time, of course. You know, another thought I'd like to lay on the table in regard to the community and the, and the future uh, the, the video we saw was delivering blood supplies, which is a, obviously a life critical function in Rwanda. Yes, it is. Uh, whatever that function may be, whether it's delivering blood or taking care of the mosquitoes or examining the albizia up in Upper Manoa to identify when to take them down, looking at the power structure for HECO, whatever it may be, if we start depending on this capability, it has to be robust and, and uh, thorough and not fail. Uh, having something that might fly away, might fail, might not work, uh, doesn't work in the rain, those are the critical things we have to have our kids think about. If they took a look at, if the kids took a look at that Rwanda video and began imagining how they could use that functionality here and then began thinking about how once you start depending on it, it better work, that changes how you look at design. And uh, that's where the interesting piece comes in in terms of what standards you're going to adhere to in, in the design, the development, and the operation. And interestingly enough, the industry is thinking about that itself. And uh, at this particular conference, uh, there were actually three sets of, of conferences taking place simultaneously. And they were the research people coming up with what they've been developing the last couple of years in terms of uh, operational research and threats and lethality. And there was the regulatory people coming up thinking about how they're going to manage standards and such so the, the the business is beginning to mature when you when you start thinking about standards you start thinking about a mature business but our kids have to be ready to be part of that and the sooner we can get them interested in beyond the lego blocks stage of critical thinking and how to use the system and how to make sure it's totally functional that's where we that's success absolutely yeah success is definitely one step at a time you know when you have a belief, and that's what we believe in, right, Ted? We believe that this technology can change the world, you know, one step at a time, and we take as much action as possible here in the state of Hawaii with the right mentality. You know, when we, especially here in Hawaii, you can't just walk into somebody's yard and start filming or start doing a project without asking permission. Real simple protocol that even in Hawaiian culture, you know you would have to ask. You'd have to ask anyone that you're approaching, may I come here and may I film? May I do a project? 
what is this project for? This is a project that was simple, solve a problem that we are dealing with here in Hawaii. And, you know, when you take out all that action, it, it, it turns into a result that will build even a bigger belief. And like you said, critical thinking. I, I love that our students in, in Hawaii, you know, especially here in a rock in the middle of the sea, you always have to think outside the box. You're always on that survival mode. And you, you, you're in the middle of the ocean. And that's what I believe even our Hawaiian ancestors were thinking. Um, that's why we mastered how to navigate around the world. Very similar where when it comes to technology, watch us master technology using drones. <laughs> you know, it's a good model. In fact, uh, throughout all of our work, we should probably use that Voyager model. Uh, that pulls together science and culture and a vision of the future and a protection of the past all at once. And I'd like to tell you about the experience we had in, uh, I think, in 1995 when hopefully I visited the West Coast. And we had NASA come down and the space voyagers and, and deal with the ocean voyagers. We all had them on the same stage at the same time and found out there was a lot of common thinking between them. And uh, that whole pro solving the whole problem is how we really have to think of ourselves, Michael. So next year, 2017 on this show, Think Tech Hawaii's Where the Drone Leads, we'll talk about community involvement. Let's make that our principal motivation for next year in every dimension. Absolutely. And that's setting the that's putting the concrete down and laying the base for a good, solid benefit to society and a good, solid educational program in Hawaii, uh, starting in 2017. I, we can we can absolutely do that, Ted. I mean. Where the drone leads, especially for the community here in Hawaii, this this community is a strong base. You know, we're bridging culture, technology, engineering, science, mathematics, English, <laughs> just about everything and anything, and putting it all into this canoe, and we're taking a voyage out into the world and showing how we can benefit um, using this aircraft or this drone where the drone leads. Oh, I love it. Okay. Yeah. So this concludes our show. And thank you very much for tuning in. We look forward to seeing all of you next week, Friday. Ted, mahalo nui from out in Tucson. And uh, we will... Do you have a final message out for the community? Community involvement, man. That's, that's, that's Drones 101 in Hawaii. Community involvement. Okay, mahalo... Mahalo, Ted, and aloha to you folks, and thank you again, and see you next week Friday. Aloha.